So what should people do if, obviously when it starts raining, they need, they need to stay away Correct. and get to high ground, but let's say they find themselves caught in the water, either in their car or outside. What's right, I think the two things that we want to talk about in, in that event is what happens in the daytime, what happens in the nighttime, because we've had events in both times now. And in the daytime, you have some visuals, use all your senses. Um, use your sense of direction and certainly use your sense of maneuvering before you get there and that little voice in your head, listen to it. And if it says to get to high ground, get to high ground, but if the water is going over the top of your shoe, and I'm not talking the boots like you're wearing, I'm talking the, the foot of your shoe, stay out of the water because this is not water. This is like molten concrete. This is like an avalanche. So stay out of the water, stay in your car. Your best solution is to stay in your car. Your car does not have a lot of um, grab holes. It's made to be aerodynamic, so the water will take the same path as will the airfoils and move the water around you. Plus your car has better clearance with your tires so the water can go underneath it as well as around it. You don't have that ability because you are the tires. And if your tires go away, then you become part of the mix. And if you're part of the mix, you're going to be going where the river goes and you're not going to be able to control your, your descent. And you're going to be amassed with masses of rock around you and you're not going to be able to get out of this. So stay in your car. Stay in your car. And I'll say it one more time, stay in your car. What if you're not in your car Okay. This happens? We try to give alerts as quickly as possible. And if you have any kind of notification, you've got any kind of water coming, get high, stay dry. Move as quickly as you can. Even two feet off the ground is going to save you a lot of energy. Water is a very, very powerful thing and water's got a lot of mass to it. And when you think about that mass of, of rock and debris coming down there, the less you're in, the better chance you have. So get as high as you can and stay dry. Get high, stay dry. So if you've got the time to do that, if at nighttime you have to rely more on your sense of hearing, if you hear things like rumbles or you hear things like water running, you hear anything that's out of the norm, then you need to be moving up and, and just move up and wait until the sound gets back to what is our normal and then think about investigating your area and then moving back down into the lower areas. Worst case scenario, let's say you find yourself in the water rushing down. Are you a body? Yes. Okay, you're not in your car? You're not in your car. Okay, a couple things that need to happen in that regard. We want you to have nose, eyes and nose and toes. Keep your nose up, keep your toes up. We don't want you to get stuck in any kind of strainer. If a tree had gone down there and a tree got impaled into the side of the, uh, the river and you come up against it, the hydraulic force is not going to allow you to get away from it. So I want you up and I want you to be with your feet up high so you can kind of keep like a bicycle motion so that you're trying to stay on top of the pile. And if you hit anything, you can deflect over it. I don't want you to try to use that as an anchor point because that anchor point is going to hydraulic you and either take you underneath it and trap you there and you'll become a screen. So if you're in the water, you're in a really bad way. You need to keep as much of your sense about you as you possibly can and try to find a place where you're going to be coming into an area where you're going to be able to find eddy and where you're going to be able to move away from the major force of the water, which is where the rivers turn or the river gets wider or the creek gets wider. Um, if you can find something overhead to grab, you need to do that, but you've got to realize that the water is going to be trying to pull you down underneath it. Now you're going to be like a, like a, a surfboard and you've got to make sure you're rigid enough where you can move yourself to get to the side of the, of the, of the creek because that's where you're most safe is going to be to the side of the creek because if there's anything that will eddy you or catch you, it's going to be there. It's not going to be in the middle of this, of this event. But you're going to be in there with a bunch of rocks and a bunch of two by fours and a bunch of washing machines and car parts and cars themselves. So you're going to have to have a presence about you that when you get stopped, there's masses coming behind you that's going to try to impale you. So it's, you're in a bad way but you've got to keep thinking. You can't turn off your thinker. You've got to make sure you're thinking. So um, I guess for people who don't understand and, and they think, how powerful is this water? I mean, you're talking about moving cars. And right. A s one square foot of water weighs eight pounds. So if you have um, 7.35 pounds, it weighs 7.35 pounds, which means that if you start adding those cubic feet of water up, you're going to be starting to get some very, very high amounts of energy very, very rapidly. And then when you talk about the speed of the water, when the narrow, when it gets narrower, that water mass has to get through there and it's not going to take a number like at a deli. It's going to want to get through this, so the speed's going to be picking up. And so if you think of how we can use water and the energy of water, because water's got the same amount of energy in all directions, that's why boats float. Energy gets pushed up. So one of the things that I really need you to be 
cognizant of is that this is not water like at a theme park, like at Waterworld. This is concrete. This is flowing concrete. It's like an avalanche, and so it's got a lot more mass to it. Thus, the water is not going to go around your feet and around your legs. Water is very, very lazy. Water is going to take the path of least resistance. Water will do that. Water is good. This is not water. This is concrete, big bully coming down the road like a bulldozer, and it doesn't care what's in front of you. You've seen a bulldozer working in the fields. This is a bulldozer that doesn't have a driver. So it's two different things, but water energy is a lot, but water energy with the viscosity and the liquid of the water, obviously, will move around you. This will not. Anything else that you want to add that you want to get out there? I would say to folks, they, that there's a lot of folks that came in here and really helped our town out and got ourselves put back in, in a relatively quick fashion. We had thousands and thousands of cubic feet of mass and destruction that came into our area and it's all gone now. It's all been moved up to our city works and that's because of people's hard work, their wheelbarrows, their shovels and their five gallon buckets and you really helped everyone in our town and I cannot thank you enough. Town people as well as our neighbors came in and helped us and I'm very, very grateful for that. Our town is back in shape again. When we have future events, you can help us by not being part of the initial event and then wait for the time when we can get people in to do that kind of work because our roads get kind of impacted and we need to use those roadways to get our trucks to other events that happen in our town. But I thank you to the folks in Manitou and I'm thankful for the people in the, in the metropolitan area of Colorado Springs and Colorado Springs because you did us a great favor and you got us back and, and we are back in, in normal operation today.